if you are interested in getting your KYC or compliance, we will allow you to have that. You don't really care whether you have KYC or not. But what we do for you is like, if you at some point in time want to reveal a subset of your transactions, we will help you do that. So, you know, imagine you are somebody who has KYC AML, uh, you want to do some transactions. At some point later, if you're in the UK, you want to go to HMRC and say, oh, you know what? These are my transactions. This is how I got my money to do that. And while you're doing the transactions, your transactions are shielded. Done, so simple. The first, uh, the first privacy guest that we had in this podcast was um, Ruben Jap from Firo. And yep, he, I happen and to know he, him. Yes, very, very charming, very smart dude. And shout out to Ruben Jap if you're listening to this. If um, and one thing that he dropped across that I was really interested on is this that you just mentioned that Firo's very focused on allowing people to showcase that they are compliant but that the way that this would mean is that your compliance would be in your own hands you would choose whether to reveal your past transactions account balance whatever i think compliance is slightly different from revealing things right so in a in a, in a what i would describe yeah. as a approval verifier mechanism you will have a service provider who actually would provide kyc and they are the prover and the protocol will act as a verifier. Now you actually have a verifier. I mean, you have a proof of verification, right? Now what you have then is like a bunch of transactions that happens. Now you attach your proof that you prove that you are KYC compliant and you could reveal by selective reveal or disclosure, you can actually reveal that this, you know, this kind of protocol was run against you as in like, it was you who got this KYC and these are the set of transactions that you actually have. And there are certain nuances it's like preventing replay attacks so that nobody else could actually gain any information about the reveal part of the protocol. That is something that we are after. So yeah, I mean, we are actually working with them. We have an MOU with them. I've known uh, you know, him for a long time. We've tried in the past to collaborate. So I, I shall admit I have been in this space called Zero Knowledge I actually have the zero knowledge handle in GitHub, in Telegram. Most of the places I can get, including Gmail, I lost it now. But for the last 20 years, I've been zero knowledge. So there you go. I think and it was also Ruben that I introduced a very fun metaphor, at least like something that I've really been using a lot in conversations outside of the podcast. And that's what he called the elevator fart metaphor and that was basically like he would compare all the different <laughs> he would compare all the different <laughs> privacy protocols to a person coming into an elevator and farting <laughs> so like monero would yeah. be coming into the elevator with a set of people and then you don't know who did it Firo would be like extracting it from the yeah. top and he would just like compare it where would you place panther on this on this metaphor <laughs> I mean, as I said, we really are not involved in the farting business, right? So we are not <laughs> so. going to ask you to fart or not fart, right? Uh, so, you know, if you are in, Fi in Firo or Monero, you know, you, 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 you know, you could fart and you could actually make sure nobody else other than the people in the elevator know, right? But in our instances, once you enter, you know, before you enter, we might even do a test to see if you farted or not, right? That's the compliance check. That could be the fart test before I, you get in and you get the <laughs> proof. <laughs> the proof that you're not the person who did this job, right? So now once you're in the mixer and while you're doing all the things that you have the proof that you are not one of them that who could actually do this or oh, you're doing this, right? So at least the people in the elevator are safe. They know these are not the farters. You know, the set of all people in here with the high probability are not farters. That's how Panda does, right? And the prevents people from farting in the elevator, uh, you know, as long as Panda can avoid it. As long as Panda um, can avoid it. So I, oh, okay, now, now that we've covered that, I'm, I'm sorry, I just, like, <laughs> I'm so amused by this metaphor that I have to put everyone through this, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so we have the very interesting concept of C assets in Panther, yep. right? And for yep. those that might not be familiar with the protocol, could you quickly go over them and why you think they're so important? Yeah, it's, it's, oh yeah, it's a very trivial concept. 
The reason it's trivial and it's important is the following. If you actually want to have an asset uh, that is shielded, you need to create a new one-to-one -one mapped asset. But other, otherwise what will happen is like any transactions that happen will be very clear on the native layer to everybody. But if you, you know, shield it and you put it into, a, 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 you know, a transparent sack, not a transparent, uh, you know, opaque sack, and you carry it around, nobody would know. Like, you know, you're a cat, right? You know, you Here's know your paperback is, for your bottle yes, of liquor, yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's exactly what it is. So literally, that's how it is. Right? You know, this is what we are trying to do. But it's one-to-one, -one, so we know that we are not doing anything funny, and everybody knows that nobody's doing anything funny. So one to one means like if you put in one asset, you can get one, you know, one alcohol bottle in a paper product. So if you look at the the shelf of the shop, there'd be one missing and there's one inside, right? Right. That's how it is. Yeah. And yeah, like, but out there when everyone's walking on the street and everyone has their stuff within their within their own paperback, no one knows yeah. who has Nobody one knows inside which their is paperback. Which. Yeah, absolutely. Unless you're holding it, 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 like even better, 3, even better. <laughs> yeah, 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 even better. The thing is like, what anybody has in the paper bag is a question, right? They would all can have different liquors in the paper bags. The question is like, what is the liquor in what paper bag? So this is this could be like, what is Carlos having? What is Anish having? Is he having wine or is he having brandy? Or is he having rum? You know. That is a kind of question that's happening. Is it a big bottle? It's just, but the big bottle, the small bottle is kind of abstracted because the paper gives away that. But you know, the rest is kind of what it is. You can actually, you know, make it transparent and you know, opaque for a whole bunch of people what you're drinking, and that's literally what we're achieving, right? And in in fact, it is like swapping around. So imagine this protocol in the physical world will be like what Panda is effectively doing is like. People go to the shops, buy it in paper bags, then they swap the paper bags around, and then they have these things in their bag. And literally, the question is like, can anybody guess what paper bag that you have? You have the ability to look, look and you know, open and look. Nobody else has. That's literally what it is. That's what Panda does for you. And the, I mean, there is the concept of okay, you take this. And of course, you're just not allowing people to, to walk around with their paperbacks. You want them to be a part of DeFi. And here's where I think we should stop the <laughs> here's where we should <laughs> stop the paperback metaphor because otherwise yeah. we're just gonna like be challenging yeah. the limits of reality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing I was about to say was like, you know, how would Panther uh, you know how would Panther provide DeFi, right? So the question is the following: what is it you want to do in a DeFi? To start with. We, we are thinking of providing an interchain DEX. So we already have a grant from one protocol, it's called the Flare Protocol, to build one, one side of the leg. And we are building on Ethereum. So day one is we have Flare, which apparently it has like 46 billion worth of assets in there. And they don't have a DEX assistance. So it's like we would be one of the first ones to go there and provide DeFi in that sense. No, D There's a protocol with no DeFi. We are literally walking in and providing more DeFi. But on a larger scheme of things, what we want to do is allow people as in users to actually go into say like a DEX, like you know Uniswap and be able to do the transactions while still preserving, you know, preserving the privacy. So we are thinking of doing that mostly in the L2 level. So, you know, because if you want to do most of those things in smart contract, it's quite expensive. Uh, but at the L2, the layer two level is much more cheaper. So we can actually get some good performance, you know, cheap, you know, cheap execution cost at the, you know, high levels of privacy. That's what you're trying to do. And the, I mean, in a thing like this context where you're doing a privacy protocol and your goal is pretty much self-defining right the goal of a privacy protocol is to be private and um, i mean the ultimate goal um you're also introducing the dao and i i reckon there must be some limitations to what the dao can do right like the dao wouldn't decide to go full transparent yeah i mean you know the the, the, the in theory it can right there's nothing stopping it from doing that so the thing is like, you know, uh, we, we, we are starting out bootstrapping with the DAO. 
uh, day one, the DAO will have a foundation, foundation behind it to actually execute the physical parts of the thing. And then DAO would completely be decentralized once the enough of threshold is received and that, that, that there's enough of decentralization of the protocol. And then, you know, people could actually put in proposal. It is possible that somebody would put in a proposal says like, you know, we be either completely decentralized and completely private, or he goes, we don't want any privacy and we are going to be completely public. You know, that's both possible. It's like, there's nothing stopping anybody from doing that. Other than the fact that everybody starts actually holding ZKPs will go nuts the moment somebody puts that proposal. So we are hoping to have something like a quadratic voting. So, you know, the cost of people's preferences are very clear rather than being arbitrary. And the ability for people who have large amounts of ZKP is kind of bounded. 